Hello and welcome. My name is Mr. Duguid and I've been invited to share some important information about AIDIT. AIDIT is a communication tool that will enhance the way memorial staff communicate with patients and their families. Before we delve into the AIDIT principles, let's try and get a better understanding of why customer satisfaction has become so important to our hospital. Now more than ever, communication is the means by which we deliver care. HCAPS, the Hospital Consumer Assessment of Health Care Providers and Systems Survey, measures our effectiveness in eight domains. These are the eight HCAPS domains. Communication with nurses, communication with doctors, responsiveness of the hospital staff, pain management, communication about medicines, discharge information, cleanliness and quietness of the hospital, and the overall rating of the hospital. CMS will reimburse Memorial based on our clinical quality measures and our HCAPS satisfaction scores, so it's important that our scores are as high as possible. We believe that following the ADET principles will lead to higher satisfaction scores and better clinical outcomes. ADET is an acronym that stands for Acknowledge, Introduce, Duration, explanation and thank. Let's take a look at each of the five elements in greater detail beginning with acknowledge. Acknowledge the patient or customer by greeting them with compassion. Let them know you are genuinely interested in their health and well-being. Use the patient's full name rather than addressing them as sir or madam or by pet names. Introduce yourself to the patient and describe your role as it pertains to their treatment. Maintain eye contact and sit at eye level whenever possible. Duration relates to letting the patient know you are willing to spend as much time with them as necessary. Provide information regarding their length of stay. Explain the plan of care. Answer the patient's questions using terms they will understand. Listen to the patient and leave time for silent pauses. Make sure you leave your contact information. Thank the patient for trusting you to provide their care. Now I'd like to show you a brief video demonstrating the appropriate and effective application of the AIDIT principles. Let's watch together. Can I help you? Okay, I'm uh, here for chest x-ray. Okay. And what's your name? Donald Little. Okay, and I have it here. You're going to get a chest x-ray, and it should be about 10 to 15 minutes, and you can have a seat anywhere in the weight area, and I'll get to you momentarily, okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you. The first interaction that a patient or family has with any medical center is often the first phone call that's made either by the referring physician or by the family trying to get directions to figure out how to get through this complex maze that represents a modern medical center. And so it's important that at that very first contact individuals understand that they are setting the stage again for how the rest of that visit, that engagement, that encounter will go. You know it's incredibly frightening to come to a large medical center. And it's really nice to see a smiling face when you first walk in the door. There's something that provides reassurance and uh, it's one of those things that as a patient makes you feel just a little less tense, lets you feel affirm that you're where you're supposed to be. You know, it's also incredibly important to give people a sense of the time to expect to wait. I think one of the worst experiences that any of us have is to be placed in an exam room at some point and you just come to that point where you wonder, gosh, do people still know that I'm here? Have they forgotten me? The same thing occurs when somebody's waiting for a procedure. And so it's incredibly important to give people an expectation, but to be sure that we respond before that time frame has run. Mr. Little? Yeah. 
How are you doing, sir? My name is Marcus. I'll be your x-ray tech. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, come on back, and uh, we'll get a couple of images of you. Okay. Uh, where, where are you from? Uh, Pound Creek, or Hatton. You know where Town Creek is? Mountain Town Creek? I know. I know Anston. I got relatives down in really? Huntsville. Okay. <clears throat> I live between Muscle Shoals, Alabama, and Decatur. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll be getting a couple of x-rays. You have any x-rays done at, at Vandy before? Uh, not here before what happened. Uh -huh. Okay, well, I'll get you in, take a couple of images. Uh, I'll get you out in like five minutes. Okay. Right, come on okay. in. Yeah. Let me get your date of birth. Nine, All right, got the right person. Marcus does such an excellent job in terms of establishing rapport very quickly. One of the things that people always talk about and have this notion is that it takes a long time. But you saw in this video clip how easy it was for Marcus to express some human concern about an individual. And we know that interest in me as an individual is one of the things that's so important to establishing rapport with members of the team. And he does such a nice job in terms of demonstrating that. In addition, he gives, again, a very clear explanation of what's going to occur. Uh, patients often are concerned that they don't know exactly what's going to happen behind the closed door, and it's really important to give people a sense of that in advance. Uh, finally, one of the things that I really like is that you see a nice demonstration of safety because not only does Marcus confirm the patient that he's dealing with, he also confirms that again by comparing birth dates. And these techniques are a part of getting to know people, but it's also a very important message of safety and how we promote doing the right thing to the right patient. Miss Little? All right, come on out. Okay. I'm gonna go right over here over this x-ray board. And this board is kind of cold and hard, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, we'll put your chest right up against there for me. Right up against here. Yes, sir. All right, we'll get you real close there. I'm gonna roll your shoulders in a little bit. And then uh, what I'll do is I'll have you take in a big, deep breath, uh -huh. and you'll just hold it in, okay? Okay. All right. Again, Marcus does such a nice job in sort of setting or helping to set expectations. No one likes to be surprised, especially a surprise where I'm suddenly cold and uncomfortable. And it's such a nice thing to warn people in advance. Okay, sir. That's it. Went too bad, was it? <laughs> All right. I appreciate it. All right, thank you. Yes, sir. All right, have a nice day and get to feeling better. You too. All you right. too. I'm feeling better. All right, and uh, go Auburn. I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> you see such a nice example of showing concern for a human being. One of the things that I really like is that What's when Marcus is speaking to the patient, he's looking at the patient. And that's such an important technique because it's so important for us to understand that people listen to the spoken word, but nonverbal communication is as important as the spoken word. And so you see Marcus both relaxed, but you also see him making visual contact. Those things send important signals. The other observation here is that you see an expression back from the patient to Marcus. There is a bond. Those things are very important, and uh, one of the things that we do as medical professionals is to look for those, and it is an affirmation that there has been this connectedness, which again is very important in terms of promoting optimal outcomes of these healthcare experiences. Hello. Hello. Could you sign in for me, please? I'm Vicki Gann. I'll be checking you in today. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Okay, Mr. Little, uh, you're a new patient, so did you get your new patient forms yes, in the mail? Yes, ma'am. Okay, right we will here. get those. Let me pull you up here. Make sure we've got them all correct. Vicki demonstrates some very nice techniques in terms of reception. She doesn't make the assumption that the forms have been received. She asks. She gives Mr. Little an opportunity to respond. In addition, she checks to see whether we've gotten that okay. So often, 
families feel as though they haven't done things appropriately. Vicki takes the responsibility on as to whether we've gotten that right. Now the only other observation that I would make, and we all get into this from time to time, is sometimes there's an incredibly important need for a pause. So for example, when Mr. Little first comes to the reception desk, there is a greeting. And sometimes it's really nice to pause just a few seconds to allow the family to respond before we give them direction. And that's a technique that sometimes is tough, we get busy, but something that may aid that interaction just a little bit. Okay, you finished your uh, paper, your form, mm -hmm. and I see you have a CD for Dr. Putnam. Mm -hmm. So it looks like you've got everything filled out. And uh, here is your communication with the family that you get to take home with you in case uh, your wife has to call in for any information about you. Okay. And you have two patients ahead of you, so Dr. Putnam should call you back maybe in about 20 minutes because he takes time with his patients. And uh, they'll put you in a room and then he'll be with you as soon as he's through. It's really nice to give families some sort of understanding about what to expect. Oftentimes individuals will sit in large waiting rooms, they see many people call back. The nice thing is that Vicki's done a nice job of telling uh, Mr. Little that there are two people in front of them. They give, she gives some expectation about what kind of wait to expect. These things are very important, again, because one of the things that you often see is people sitting and sort of wondering, well, am I next, or is this person next, and maybe I've been forgotten. This handles it quite nicely. The other observation that I make is that she does a nice job to give an explanation of why it may take a little extra time, because Dr. Putnam likes to spend time uh, with his patients. This is an important affirmation, and again, another nice opportunity of managing up. I think it's incredibly important for all of us who are engaged in healthcare delivery to pause periodically to reflect about how we have interacted with our patients, how we, uh, what things we've done well, what things we could do better. Pausing and reviewing a video like this is incredibly helpful because when I do that I see things that are modeled that are incredibly good and I need to emulate those things. But you know the other thing I see is that I see some things that I might have personally done different in the same way that people who would watch me in the practice of medicine would say, gosh, I like this, I don't like that. That's okay. That's a part of the learning process as we attempt to learn from each other, to encourage each other. It's also important, and it's seen throughout this video, how individuals have used their own personal skills to link with patients, to send the message that they are individuals, that they have lives outside of medicine itself. We know from lots and lots of research studies that families just want a sense that we respect them as human beings. And if we ask somebody if they're an Alabama fan, that in itself sends a very clear message. I think it's also important that we develop tools, or we have tools to help remind us of principles that are very important in engagement the issues of being sure that we have identified who we are, what people are to expect, to give them a sense of how they should be oriented to the process. Those tools help us to become the professionals that we can be. Physicians and clinicians using EDIT improve patient outcomes by decreasing patient anxiety, increasing compliance, safety, and quality, increasing patient loyalty and satisfaction, and most importantly, it is the right thing to do. Using Aidit will help fulfill our mission of providing exceptional health care and compassionate service.